All right, what is up guys? Coach Show, not the Lions Den. We are at CBUS uh, in Ohio. I got Brad Arbick, who we've been doing tons of videos with, but this one's gonna be dedicated just to Brad. Brad is a powerlifting maniac. He has a crazy total, he's insanely strong. Uh, so I'm a strong man, don't have much experience with powerlifting. So when I have these questions, I ask him, he kind of looks at videos, gives me some, some feedback on everything. Uh, but we thought it'd be kind of cool if he gave five tips uh, that I can improve on my bench press. And I figured if I need to improve on them, you guys can too. So Brad's just gonna go step by step, addressing it, keep this video kind of moving at a fast pace. You guys get your pens and paper ready, baby. We're gonna go over some stuff and then use it in your training. Ready, Brad? Let's do this. First off, Brad, give him a little flex. What's your bench press? Uh, right now in training, best bench press is 530. Okay, that's pretty freaking strong. I can deadlift 530. I don't think I could ever bench it. So, you gotta respect this man. That's raw, right? You know, that's, yeah, that's t-shirt. T-shirt, yeah. He, he's a pretty raw kind of dude. So, all right, Brad, what's uh, what's on tap? What do we got? What's the first one? All right, so first thing is, is you wanna create stability, right? So, anytime that we're trying to apply force to something, we wanna make, we wanna make sure we're on a stable platform. And in order to do that, we wanna make sure we get a good stable, stable base with our back. So we, we bring our backs in nice and tight. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to retract the scapula and then depress. So that's retract and then depress. And so what that looks like is you're gonna see the, sh the shoulders re uh, retract and then depress. And so when we do that, it creates a good stable position for us to be able to press from. So that's number one. So retract, depress. Okay, right. so you'll see Joe do that now. So back. So get my feet set. So kind of, I want to get up on my shoulder blades a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so I like to do that as a cue when I'm, when I'm just coaching this for the first time. I like to try to have them scoot their, you know, scoot their shoulders back in, just kind of walk it in nice and tight, almost like you're going to pinch a pencil between okay. your shoulder blades. And then kind of tuck them down. And then tuck them down. Okay. So that's good, right? Does that look, does it look all right? That looks good. Okay. And so now that we're here, we got a good stable position. What we also want to do, step two, we want to try to create a high point with the chest because doing a decline press is much easier than doing an incline press. So what we try to do is we raise up our chest and we attempt to bring our shoulder blades and our, our hips as close together as possible to create that high point. So shoulders and hips as close together as possible to be able to bring that high point. And that gives us a mechanical advantage to be able to press more effectively. So now we have our shoulders back, try to create that high point. Right, so a nice, nice high point. And when we, when we touch, we want to try to come to about here. So right, right here. Good, good. Okay, and rack it. Okay, and that brings us to the third point of performance, third tip is when we, when we bench, we wanna make sure we really squeeze that bar. We're not gonna let that bar just sit in our hands. We wanna squeeze it. And by doing that, when we squeeze the bar real, real hard, see, it, look, at his, look at Joe's wrist here. Do that again, so let, loosen up. Now squeeze one more time, super hard. You see all that muscle activation that happens in the forearm there? That's all gonna be stability and power for him when he's pressing. So we don't wanna let that bar just sit in the hands. We wanna control that and squeeze real, real hard. Because one, it's safe, and two, you get better muscular activation. So real, real hard squeeze. Good, good, good. Now, if you were watching real careful and you were listening real careful, you could hear Joe's breathing. And that's a huge tip for, for beginners, right? A lot of people mess up the breathing piece. Typically, when I'm doing 10 reps or less, I take one big breath and I hold that breath for the duration of that, of that set. So 10 or less, one breath. And the reason why we do that is because every time we breathe, watch Joe, take a, take a deep breath here, Joe. Now let that breath out, Joe. See that chest move? Right, so you see that chest collapse. Now, if we're gonna take time and energy to get ourselves in an optimal position and try to get as much mechanical advantage as we can, we don't wanna give up any of that position. So the next step we're gonna do is, same thing we've been doing, nice tight shoulders, right? Nice and back, high chest, squeezing that bar, big breath, hold it. One more rep. Cool, rag it. Now, Joe, if you'll sit up with us for just a second. Oh, thank God, my back's, back's <laughs> so, cramping. So that's that's one of the biggest complaints that I hear about when I'm when I'm working with somebody on bench, is they talk about how difficult is it on the back, because it is. And uh, if you follow Matt Winning, we were able to train with today, you know, he's a big proponent of, of working that platform and, and building a big, strong back. So in order to get a good bench press, big, strong back, and that all helps 
with what we're doing here. But a lot, a lot of that, a lot of that focus of pulling that back and in, uh, back and in tight, it, uh, it can be very stressful and very hard on the back, especially if you're not used to doing it. Now, the last tip that we're going to go through that's going to really help you guys increase your bench press right away is going to be leg drive. So much like a baseball player, right? When a baseball player winds up and hits a, hits a ball, really a lot of that power is, is stemming from their legs and they're driving through that ball, right? So the power on our bench, a lot of that too stems from that leg drive. And that's why when you want to make things more difficult, you take legs out of it. So for this, we're going to do everything we did before. We're going to lay back, we're going to pinch the shoulder blades back, we're going to have a high chest, we're going to squeeze real hard, we're going to hold our breath, and then we're going to drive with our heels into the ground so hard that you would almost slide yourself off the end of the bench that way, okay? okay. And one of the reasons why we don't slide is because typically we have weight in our hands which acts as a balance kind of pinning us to the, to the bench. So there you go, shoulders backing in, create that high point in the chest, squeeze, big breath, now drive with the legs. One more rep. Good. Cool. So, let's ask Joe, how did all that feel? It felt uh, like I had to focus on a lot of that stuff to get more power, but when I did it correctly, there's definitely going to be more oomph behind it than if I didn't focus on all that. Um, question I have for you in terms of foot position. Sometimes I see people on their toes, mm -hmm. and then some people I see flat on their heels, uh, or the whole foot on the ground. It, do you have a preference or would you say it's, it's personal preference or do you think one's better than the other? I think, I think in terms of foot placement, it's kind of personal preference and, and especially too if you're a competitor, right? So if, you're a, if you compete in a federation, that, uh, there are some rules, federation to federation, that will dictate what you can or can't do. But if you're just a, you know, kind of going to the gym and you're just doing your own training, it really is where you're most comfortable. Some people lack the mobility to, get to be able to get the legs back and up on their toes. Other people don't like the way that it feels. So as long as you can kind of generate the commiserate drive with your legs from whatever position you elect is, is sufficient. One of the reasons why people tend to pull their legs back the way, the way that you discussed is it helps pin the butt down. Because in, in, uh, in competition, you can't raise your butt or it's a no lift. So a lot of people will bring their legs far, far back so that way they quite physically cannot get their butts off the bench. And that's one of the reasons why they do that. They also may just like the tightness and however that is. But essentially, if you're just an average gym goer, it's kind of up to you and what you feel. But if you compete, you know, your federation kind of dictates the, the option. Yeah, I think out of the ones that we just went over with Brad, the big ones for me is always going to be or be remembering my leg drive. Sometimes it's one of those things where you can tell right away if you've done it correctly or not. Uh, so for me, being conscious of my legs, using that power, I have big strong legs, so I wanna make sure that I can use that. And the other one was holding my breath. So typically I do breathe, you can see it's really habitual. Uh, you could hear me you know, take the breath at the top between reps. So I wanna play around with holding my breath more just to uh, keep stability in the lift. Uh, but I think those are all really awesome points. Is there anything you'd want to add on closing when it comes to the bench press? I just think it's, um, you know, bench press and, and really all things, right? If you're, trying to, if you're trying to lift maximally, little things begin to matter more and more. And so it, the, the closer you start getting to your absolute strength, the more those little, those little incremental things are going to make a big difference. And ultimately, with any lift, bench or otherwise, you want to make sure that you create a good, stable position from which to apply force to that bar, and you want to eliminate any unintended movement because that's all just loss of power. So anything that you can shore up, any unintended movement, you see people do happy feet when they're benching and stuff, they're just bleeding off energy. So controlling your body, focusing your energy, and being able to apply pressure directly where you want it. Hell yeah, I think uh, Brad hit some, like the biggest points that most beginners and intermediates and uh, myself, I don't know where I fall on that spectrum because uh, I'm not really a power lifter and I need to work on my bench press. So I know I got some homework to do. Hopefully you guys are taking notes. Uh, I'll recap everything down below in the description. But Brad, my man, where can everybody find you when it comes to your content and just checking you out? So I have my own YouTube channel, which is Brad Arbic. And you can find me on Instagram at Brad underscore Arbic. And uh, probably throw a link in the description box below. But I just appreciate the opportunity to be here with you, Joe, and, and all the training that we've been doing. It's been a blast, man. Hell yeah. So guys, go subscribe to Brad. Super strong dude. Lots of cool content on there. Lots of little tips uh, that I'm sure when he says them, you guys will be able to, to connect with and put them in your training. So stay a lean, mean strength machine. And Brad, give him a closing. What's the closing? You want to do mine? Yeah, I want you to do your closing. All right, cool. Uh, 
thanks for checking this guys. I appreciate you. Remember, no matter what it is you think you can't do, like find those little tips and tricks to be able to improve your bench. It's never gonna happen unless you get in and train despite. You're either gonna find an excuse or you're gonna find a way. And I hope that you guys continue to find the way. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.